let's talk about the march for our lives i don't know if it's for our lives or if it's just for votes well we're going with votes and if you've participated with this march for our lives i'm sorry to tell you that you have been fooled you've been tricked you have been lied to by the adults in your life by the media by so many others they use zero actual real facts they decide to just do whatever they please to trick and deceive everyone to try to take guns away which are actually saving lives every single day so why don't we look at some real statistics some real evidence and you can decide for yourself what's really going on all right so let me give you some numbers real quick before we get to the uh, clips of some shocking evidence of this March for Lives, our lives, whatever, is completely, it was completely illegal. Um, Southwest provided a plane. There's going to be so much stuff. But let me throw out some numbers, okay? So we all know Americans love our guns. You know what? We have the most guns in the world per capita. We have 90 to 100 per 100 people. You would think that we'd have a lot of gun crimes with all those guns, right? Well, um, per the actual statistics, the actual facts, we actually don't even make the top five in murders. We don't make the top 10. We don't make the top 30. Out of 213 countries, we only rank 111. So since the hot topic is uh, school shootings and how devastating they are, yes, they are absolutely devastating and I, I would never say that they are not. I have three children of my own and I would absolutely never say that that's a, something we should just glance over. But let's look at the real numbers. There have only been 138 people, including faculty and staff, killed in a school shooting since Sandy Hook. 138. Now let's look at the number of teens killed it while texting and driving every single year. That number is about 4,500 every single year just from texting and driving. So if we really want to protect our children, we should probably just take all of their cell phones away. That would make the most sense, actually, if you look at it. Okay, so I'm really going to get on with the clips now. I have nothing really much more to say, but um, if you could please uh, support my channel. You know YouTube is censoring me like crazy. They won't even monetize my channel. It is what it is, but uh, I have my links in the description, and if you would like any skincare or makeup products, feel free to message me or just go to my link. It is in the description as well. And I do have men skincare products. Don't think it's just for women. Um, and let's get on with the shocking facts of how terrible guns really are and how terrible these adults in these children's lives are. Those of you I did not meet in my uh, reception line, I am Debbie Miller. She of the multiple, multicolored emails. Um, and uh, on behalf of Giffords, I could not be more excited to welcome you all to our We Are The Change trip. Um, speaking in front of kids for a living is super easy, but this is a little nerve wracking. So, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Beverly Lewis and got this place donated and we are super appreciative so please if you have any events coming up have them here at the Marriott. Mm -hmm. Everyone who's going it would be amazing if you could familiarize yourself with the Giffords organization. Giffords has not only arranged an unbelievable itinerary for us but they've got medical support, there's security, there's counseling, there's media relations, pretty much everything that they could think of um, they have arranged for us. We've got, um, yeah, we've got teachers. I feel like it's like going to camp. Like, you know, have you texted your mom? Um, my uh, tech support extraordinaire has set up a Facebook page and Instagram. The username is we are the change underscore DC because we are the change was taken. If you don't have an itinerary, it's because um, when I got up to like almost 200, my principal is like, I'm assuming that's not for school, and I was like, hmm. 
I'm sure it is. Um, if you've had a chance to go over it, you'll see that it is really, really, really um, outstanding. They've also gotten us into um, some private viewings of museums that ordinarily um, it takes forever, like five years to get into. We're also um, going to have some things that are not on the agenda that are kind of um, top secret. So all the press here, just pretend you're not hearing this. Um, but we will be introduced on Capitol Hill by Nancy Pelosi. So that's kind of cool. Um, Mitch McConnell is threatening to meet with us, but I'm not sure if he really means that or not. That's his part of the reveal. So we'll see how that one goes. And it's quite, quite possible we're going to have a private meeting with Joe Biden. Yeah. I got to speak to Joe Biden on the phone through Gifford. Um, and he's really dedicating his life, I have to tell you guys, to your cause. We interrupt this message for something very disturbing. I don't understand why all of these people, especially the adults, are so enthusiastically clapping to meet creepy Joe Biden. He has a little handsy issue with touching children in public. So if he's doing this in public, could you imagine what this man is doing in private? But you're having these children very, very excited to meet this man. I like at least that you put nobody will meet these people without adult supervision because I sure the heck wouldn't ever allow my child to even meet this man, let alone without supervision. Y'all need to wake up to what's going on here. Of course he's for your calls. He has an issue with children. And it's not an issue that he cares about them. It's very... This is not edited. This is actually what's happening on C-SPAN, for goodness sakes. Could you imagine? Just imagine what he's doing in his private time. It It's sickening. These children are... You can tell on their faces, like, what is going on here? Why is this old man touching me? It's beyond me that you are so excited and having these children so brainwashed. Since I have the video sped up so quickly, you can't see all of the details, but if you haven't seen this, um, I would definitely search it. Um, poster making, we're gonna have our own Parkland Lounge, they're calling it for you guys to go and decompress and have press-free zones. Okay, all media requests, as you guys know, and you've been doing great, have to go through Anna Direct, through Giffords, um, the greatest thing that has happened to me throughout this whole process is that I was given a press attache. How cool is that? <laughs> They're like, what do you need? And I said, well, I don't know what I need. And they said, would you like a press attache? And I said, I think I would. <laughs> because I feel like I'm the kind of person that should have a press attache. So now I have one and I go around telling people I have one. It's impressive, right? Giffords will be sending a person with you. There's no kids going to press events by themselves. And this is really important. You need to have your talking points ready. We are going to be met at the check-in counter at the Fort Lauderdale Airport by a person from Giffords. They're going to know you are because you're going to be wearing your cool Gifford shirt. Please wear your shirt on the plane. That is my one big request. Now, for plane captains, there's gonna be a teacher at one end, and there's gonna be a teacher at the other end. So one teacher is gonna make sure at the counter that you're checked off the list, that you get to security, and there'll be another teacher waiting at the other end of security. Yeah. No. By the way, Southwest has donated all of these seats to us. Oh, wow. When we get off the plane, the Giffords people will be there. They will literally usher us off. We'll go to baggage. The buses that are taking us to DC are right there. It's not going to rain on Saturday, so yay. I would say something about the politician who said the Jews were in charge of weather, so you're welcome. But that's not right. Um, the 
the other thing is, and again, this is super off the record. So here's what happened. It was supposed to be a march. And then, shockingly, they wouldn't give permits for the march. So the march became a rally. Now, I've heard rumors from kids um, that since the rally is right on Pennsylvania Avenue and the White House is like a 20 minute walk up the street, that that might happen. So it's conceivable that we could leave at the end of the rally and walk to the White House where we rally some more and hold up our signs and say our piece and create a little hell and then go to the NDA building and have hot chocolate. I would say to everybody on that sixth floor, not, my, not only my kid, but the others. And my daughter got shot nine times. Oh, it was, so it was Valentine's Day when this whole nightmare started. I was on a picnic with my wife. That's when I, I got the first text that there was a shooting. My name is Kyle Kashuv. I'm a 16-year-old junior at Stoneman Douglas, and um, I was there the day of the shooting. That sheriff was at that door at the third minute mark before this guy went up to the third floor. So he told me that he could have saved everybody on that sixth floor, not, my, not only my kid, but the others. And my daughter got shot nine times, four times. And then she managed to crawl to, a, to the door. And then she put her arms around a freshman, my daughter's 18 senior. And the detective said, Andy, you won't believe it. Your daughter covered this girl in the doorway. And then this guy came and shot my daughter at Port Blank five more times. And the bullets went through my daughter and killed the girl underneath her too. Why this? Why this motherfucker just waited right out, right out the door well, and he let this shit happen. And now he's re retired and he's, he's gonna get his pension and go live in Arizona somewhere. I think the proper question is how come the media isn't representing people like Andrew, pa Andrew Pollock and Ryan Petty who are doing the legislative work that is, is enacting change like we've seen. And it's not being represented because it's more important to depict David Hogg and his latest opinion on the NRA versus real people who don't want to see this happen, who lost someone very close to them who, are, who, even though they're Republicans and conservatives, they've reached across the aisle and they're doing the necessary work to make sure this doesn't happen. These are the people that need to be blasted across the headlines every single day. My daughter was killed, so they're here today. So if anyone knows how they're feeling, it's me. You know, I, I feel and I emphasize with how much pain they got. But I would urge them, now they're all together, it's great, they're gonna be heard but I would urge them to focus on school safety. This isn't just a gun control debate. Making sure schools are safe, not everything has to do with guns. You don't think about gun control when you go on an airplane. You're not thinking about gun control when you go into a stadium. Why, why does that come from when we're thinking about safety with our kids? Why is it about gun control? It should be about hardening the schools and them being safe. The only other thing I would say is that there's a clear-cut way to getting legislation passed and there's a clear-cut way to getting adults to listen to you. And hanging up on the president, first of all, is not that way. Legal law-abiding gun owners of America, not all Stoneman Douglas students hate you and think you're extreme. And um, look, we're fighting for you. I will not rest until I can make sure that the unalienable rights guaranteed by the Second Amendment will not be infringed upon. Same life. So, hey guys, I'm here with my son Hunter. We're at the Double Tree. The kids just all left for the march. We tried for two days to get Hunter to give his speech at the march, and he was denied. He was denied being able to speak what he felt and his feelings. So we're here. We're going to give you a little taste of Hunter's speech that was just uh, from the heart. And here he goes. That's my son Hunter. How are you? I put a lot of time into this speech, so now uh, I'm going to read it to you guys. Just a part of it, not the full speech. The hatred and sickness that fuels a killer to kill innocent students is something most of us will never understand. But that doesn't mean it's something we can't ignore. We need to be on a mission to stop these monsters before they take action inside our schools. We must demand our leaders to help those who are sick, but we must also demand that they protect those of us who are not. In closing, I ask you to say my sister's name to yourself. It's such a beautiful name. 
Meadow. If you say her name, it's impossible not to feel the beauty of who she was and who she will always be. Meadow, it makes me think of a sunny day, like this one, a day where the sun shines on our youth and shines on our desire to live a safe and happy life. I can feel Meadow right now. She's asking us to come together. She wants us to thank my families and the parents of the victims like my dad Andrew and Mr. Ryan Petty. And all the others who are turning their grief into something positive. She says thank you for continuing to fight for the survivors and students of all ages. Meadow is asking us to be smarter and to love and to share the common denominator we share. Embrace this life, make the most of it, don't let it be wasted and do not allow it to be taken away by a weapon of any kind. To my sister who is up in heaven, I promise you here that today, Dad and I, along with millions of people at our side, will do our part in making schools safe so that this never happens again. We vow to protect America's children in a way you should have been protected. We will keep them safe from the killers and all the weapons they use until we meet again, Meadow. I miss you like crazy. I love you, we all love you. May you shine on us today and every day going forward. Thank you. Whoa, man, that, that's rough. It's rough listening to, I got Meadow's boyfriend's here too. I'm gonna show you, he's like another son. I got two more sons at the table uh, with me. Brandon. How's it going? You got anything just, to say? Yeah, it's, it's what, what Hunter said is just, how we all feel it's just it's horrible really and it's our new life and it's what we have to live with but we have to make something good come out of it and we have to make a change and we're going to Rip. I just believe that everybody has to come together and, and support each other it's, it's not about you know guns and fighting guns it's about making things safe and people should go out of their house and you should send your kids to school you shouldn't have to worry Wherever you go, you should feel safe, and that's something everybody has to come together and make happen. All right. What would you tell the kids out there, Brandon? That are uh, I wouldn't today? go to school. Okay. Oh, in Washington right now. Yeah, for the, the kids the that march. are marching. What would you have? What would you tell them? You know, that's not what I believe in. Well, you know, tell them. That's not what I believe in. I believe in making the school safe. If he can't get into school, it doesn't matter what weapon he has. He shouldn't have been able to get into school. So there you have it. You got kids here that they don't want to hear from these kids. But the main thing should be school safety. And that's why we're here. That's why uh, my, my kid wanted to speak today. And they, they denied him. And these kids. These kids think with common sense. We're the future. Yep, these kids are the future right here. So, all right. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, we're going to go through the top five most ridiculous myths about guns that we hear on a day-to-day -day basis. Myth number one, more gun restrictions will equal less gun crime. This couldn't be further from the truth, considering the fact that nine out of ten guns that are actually used in crimes are illegally purchased on the street through black market sales. Even MSNBC's Joe Scarborough admits this fact. It's like only three percent. Of, of, of murders and crimes are committed with guns from people who actually purchase those guns. Isn't this a big trafficking problem too? Sure. In 2016, there were 2,000 shootings in Chicago. Just think about that for a minute. 2,000 shootings in one year alone in one single city. They even had shootings at the funerals of the original shooting victims. And by the way, none of those were NRA members. And no, none of those guns were purchased legally at a gun store in a neighboring state. Those guns were purchased exactly like this. With a gun, then have their rival find them without one. Where do you get a gun like this? Where did you get this gun? Shit, we got Off the streets, people sell them. How easy is it for someone to get a gun? That easy. You want one? Yeah. No. Just like that. <laughs> That's you know? how easy it is. So tell me. How would banning the AR-15, raising the age of purchase to 21, or introducing any new gun legislation at all stop this? This scenario, by the way, constitutes 95% of the shootings in this country. So go ahead, tell me, which laws will stop this? Myth number two, we are the only country in the world with this amount of gun crime. This is also false. 
This can be easily debunked by a quick search on the internet. Countries like Honduras, Brazil, Colombia, Uruguay, Venezuela, and several other countries where gun ownership for citizens is virtually completely outlawed, they have 60 times the amount of gun crime than we do. This, despite the fact that they only have around 6 guns per 100 people in some of these cases, versus America, where we have 100 guns per 100 people. And this brings us to myth number 3, when people say that you cannot compare America to those particular countries because their economy and industry are terrible. Well, which is it? Are you arguing that the more lax gun laws we have here in America will equal more gun crime, or are you arguing that the lack of economic opportunities equal more gun crime? You can't be in the middle. Because if your premise is that the more lax our gun laws are here in America, it will lead to more gun crime, then this can be easily debunked by those examples I have just given you. Not to mention the fact that the top four safest states in America to live per capita have permitless concealed carry. Yes, New Hampshire, Maine, Idaho, and Vermont all have permitless concealed carry and are the top four safest states in America to live per capita. Now this is per capita, so an argument of population is rendered completely irrelevant in this situation. Myth number four, guns take more lives than they save, and you will probably be shot with your own gun or shoot an innocent person if you use your weapon in self-defense. This by far is the most ridiculous myth out of all of these myths, and it can be easily debunked actually by the Obama administration itself. In 2013, the Obama administration ordered the CDC to do a study, a thorough study, on gun violence. It hilariously backfired when the CDC reported that guns stop anywhere from 500,000 to 3 million crimes every single year. Now this far outweighs the 12,000 intentional murders that occur by gun each year. But the media doesn't report on these stories. It just takes a quick search on YouTube to find hundreds of thousands of clips of law-abiding American citizens defending their home and their property with guns. Yes, in some cases even with AR-15s. I'll even link in the description a compilation for you to see for yourself. So the good far outweighs the bad with guns. Now according to the CDC as well, 250,000 people die each year from medical malpractice. And a lot of those they report are during surgery and mistakes during surgery. Do we see anyone marching against doctors today in our society when these things happen? No, because the good far outweighs the bad. Additionally, 10,000 people die each year from alcohol-related car crashes. Now, a lot of these people are innocent children being run over by crazy maniac drunk drivers. Do we see anyone marching in the streets against alcohol? Do we see anyone marching in the streets against Budweiser or calling on Congress to deem Anheuser-Busch a terrorist organization? No, we don't. We blame the person. So this brings us to our final myth, myth number five. How many times have you heard people say that the AR-15 is the weapon of choice in mass shootings? It's a weapon of war that must be banned now. Well, this is also false. According to a study by Mother Jones and the research they gathered of the past 96 mass shootings since 1982, the AR-15 was only involved in six of the past 96 mass shootings since 1982. This means it's very rarely used in mass shootings. Another thing we always hear about the AR-15 is that it cannot be used for anything except for mass murder and destruction here in America. This is also false. In 1963, Colt purchased the AR-15 from Armalite and marketed it as the superb hunting partner. It's been sold here in America for 60 years and still today it's being used as a hunting rifle, especially for boar hunting because you've got six or seven boars running at you, you're not going to be using a bolt-action hunting rifle. The AR-15 is also preferred to be used by women in hunting and home defense because it has very little recoil. Now, as we've seen in hilarious clips on Facebook, sometimes the shotgun doesn't work out too well for most women. Now, this is most women. No offense out there, women. I know there's a lot of women that could shoot a shotgun. And lastly, knives have killed five times more people than the AR-15. In 2016, the AR-15 killed 379 people versus 1,600 people who were killed by knives and 450 people who were killed with your bare hands. Maybe we should think about instituting a federal ban on these guns. So thanks for watching. Um, 
like subscribe and please share we need to get the truth out and these young people that are really believing that they are out for a cause need to know what's really going on oh also anybody that donates through paypal please put a message in there if you would like me to um thank you personally over the you know in my video or whatever um because i don't know if you do or if you want me to use your username or whatever i don't want to like dox you and put your name out there if you don't want your name out there but again thank you for watching uh, y'all have a wonderful night